All right, here we are back again. Sherlock Chapter 1. Um, we are going to start by picking up the last two pieces of art. Masterpieces by... My goods will brighten up your house. London, Enjoy your sketch purchase. of a young boy. How much money do I have left over? Ten. That's not really a lot. Alright, last time we picked up a case, what was dead in the shadows, and in that we are going to go to the cemetery and see if we can hunt ourselves a vampire. Nosferatu. And... There we go. You're an open grave. I'm on a break. I don't want to think. Could you help me? I don't think anyone here knows the answer. You should ask someone else. You obviously haven't thought this all through. No. Why are you just annoying these people on purpose? I mean, it's accidental, but delightful, so... Open grave. I mean, from the names, I'm guessing that they would be in the Ottoman portion of the cemetery, but I don't see any open graves here. So, I don't think it's them. May I ask you something? No, it's the first time I've heard it. Okay. So... No. Huh. No, no. Okay. Um, open grave. Huh. This place gives me the creeps. What if the vampire comes back? There we go. I did not uh, realize that this opened. Flowers, hat, rock, blood, lamp, a tripod, spotlight over there. John being a nuisance. Spotlight is lighting up. Another hat, torn clothing. Grave. Bombing tools from Skyrim. Empty coffin. Manner of note. Children. Cold fire with mushrooms. This is the vagrant, okay. Gotcha. He said he was about to have dinner. Okay. Well, let's start there. I was having my supper when Johnny came to dig another grave, as usual. There was someone else with him, too. I must have dozed off for a while. When I woke up, everything was a blur, screaming, howling, and flashes of lightning, but no thunder. Some devil was at work. I came out to see what was happening, and there was this reporter, Leonard, or something. He told me that it was okay. Gotcha. Mmm, nicely roasted. 
Psilocybin mushrooms. Mm -hmm. These are powerful hallucinogens. And booze. I wonder how even the most destitute always somehow manage to scrape together enough for a drink. Okay. The label is illegible. It says morphine on it, clearly. You know what to do, Professor Shelley. Like Mary Shelley, like Frankenstein. Looks like a set of surgical instruments. One is missing. Expensive hat with a few gray hairs stuck to the brim. So that's the professors. Someone tore their trousers here. That's the grave digger. But why would the light be pointed over here? This is a somewhat neglected and dusty hat. The stone is rather unwieldy, so it couldn't be used as a weapon. Someone fell and hit their head on it. Hmm, we're dealing with a very immoderate bloodsucker here. The flowers are still fresh. Let's see if we got anything else. Yeah, here we go. The blade is bent from the impact. The bleeding wasn't severe, there are just a few drops. All right. I'm assuming that the police set the light up. It's not very polite to just drop in on someone unannounced. This must be the vagrant shelter. Quite homely, if you don't mind sleeping next to the corpses. I mean, honestly, quiet and people leave you alone doesn't sound all that bad. Is there anything else? They're missing something because it hasn't done the thing. So let's see what it is. Oh, right, this. <clears throat> Gotta figure out what the chemical is, even though it definitely said morphine on the bottle. Yeah, negative four. Three. Um. Oh, 
Okay. How am I supposed to get negative four out of this? Oh, <clears throat> there's a new thing where I can invert it. Okay. which is used for embalming corpses. Shovel with a bent blade, a few drops of blood. So circle in surgical instruments, one is missing. Near a supper of hallucinogenic mushrooms. Dirty hat near a blood-stained stone, a pool of blood nearby. That's the one who is exsanguinated. An expensive hat with a few gray hairs and a piece of torn fabric on a root. Massive blood loss. So that's him over there. Blood loss minimal. And he died from an intracranial hemorrhage. Alright, so... Gravedigger over here. Balls hits head. Dies. Massive blood loss. Professor over here. Hit with a shovel. Not a lot of blood loss. I think I get it. Here with the vagrant, there he is. Okay, now I'm not sure about any of this. I don't even know who these people are. Professor. Wow, okay. I'm more lost on this one than I usually am. I definitely overlooked some evidence. Okay, I mean, I know what happened to them, but I don't have any idea. Um, we got a Tanner and the deceased. Who is the other one? Who's the third one supposed to be? Oh. <sighs> Be nice if they gave a description. Never saw him leaving the house to put flowers on his sister's grave. Okay, let's start with that. Flowers. Okay. All right, the guy with the glasses, that's our journalist. This guy is not the vagrant, he's somebody else. But there we go. Bringing flowers to visit his sister. Okay, there's that. And I doubt he just randomly started stabbing people.
Is that supposed to be the journalist? Or an actual vampire? Alright, that's him. It's not him. I have no idea who the fuck that's supposed to be. Somebody with a beard. I'm going to say truly vampire. The reporter is obviously full of shit. And run out of fresh cadavers for dissection. You know what to do. The shovel is one of the murder weapons. The missing surgical instrument. Okay, that's what was used to make the puncture wounds. The, rep the per reporter could not be the only one who killed two people. What does he say he did after he came to the... Vampire... Now that I know that this is his sister, no. And is that meant to be this guy? Uh, yeah, that's meant to be the vagrant, so no, he wasn't involved. He was too busy tripping balls. Um, could have been the reporter. I guess it must have been, because that's our, our only choice. So, okay. The reporter was involved with this dissection process here. Um, that's not the vagrant. Say it's this guy here who's got the embalming fluid. Okay. Okay. The professor has this note from Professor Shelley. It's from the medical college. The guy is bringing flowers to his sister, shows up. The professor and the gravedigger are there, exhuming her body to use for medical science. He gets upset, and he does something. Okay. 
he attacks the professor. The journalist is the one who does the vampire thing because he wants to get a story. How does he kill two men? I suppose one of them fell and hit their head on a rock. So... He only killed the one, the other one was running away. Um... And this is... That's the grave digger. That's the professor. Yeah, that's his hat. Yeah, okay. Then, uh, no, this wasn't the journalist. It was... Oh, shit. We only have three choices. Um... That's my best guess. Let's see if it's right. The brother of the deceased became okay. furious when he caught the anatomist exhuming his sister's body. He killed him with a shovel. The graveyard keeper took to his heels, but didn't get far. He fell, hitting his head on a stone, which rendered him unconscious. Okay. With the murderer gone, the reporter who was hiding punctured the neck of the first victim to imitate a bite. But when he did the same to the second victim, he killed an unconscious man. So we have two murders and two murderers, but no vampires. Vampires are not so scary when you have grave robbers and journalists running around. Okay. I feel like I had less to go on with that than many of the others, but it's also possible I just was not uh, thorough in my examination of the evidence. All right, let's return to the police and their reward. Constable Stark, do you believe in vampires? Hey, What do vampires have to do with anything? Oh, that's exactly what I thought while looking into the murders at the cemetery. The primary suspect is indeed the murderer, but he's not the only one. The reporter, who so easily fooled everyone with his vampire stories, killed the other victim. But why would he do that? He believed the unconscious man to be dead, and decided to concoct a thrilling story for his readers. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. I'll have the conniving little scrub taken in immediately. There's only one case left. Don't let me stop you. <clears throat> the scapegoat. Four persons were arrested for theft, property damage, and debauchery. The four comprised of three women dressed in robes and animal masks and a priest. The suspects have been charged with stealing and slaughtering a goat in the forest ruins to the west of the cemetery. For this cruel act, they will be prosecuted accordingly. However, the victim was requested to specifically identify who stole his goat. Wooly was the best goat I ever owned. Very fertile. He charged, he charged at anything red, but otherwise he was calm as a cat. I was inside when he was stolen. By the time I ran out, they were gone, but I saw that the thief was wearing a mask. I must know who did it. Please put Mr. Plasto on to this. It looks like they were for running a gambling den, but with a single look at his clothes, I'm sure he will solve this in a jiffy. priest is still tipsy. I came to the ruins to save these lost souls and stop their abhorrent ritual. I found them dancing and I hid in the bushes only to gather courage, mind you. 
I didn't see any goats. Then one of them stumbled, I gasped, and they noticed me. The one who fell tied me up. The other and a lion mass forced me to drink wine. I don't know where the third woman was, but when they stopped tormenting me, the goat had appeared. The woman in green, the green ox mask is limping. I couldn't steal the goat even if I wanted to. I sprained my ankle during the dance. It was the priest who brought us to the goat. He may be all holier than thou now, but he clearly wanted to join our little bacchanalia. The woman in the red lion mask has a large bruise on her side. I broke an amphora with a very expensive wine because of that goat. He was probably rabid. Bird should have known better than to steal this crazy animal. I've had enough. This is the last time I take part in these rituals. I already have three lovers. That's more than enough. We gathered to perform a ritual which would make men desirous above all else. We were dancing when we noticed someone spying on us from the bushes. It was the priest. I ordered the others to get him drunk. No one must witness our ritual while sober because it insults the god of rapture. Oh, about the goat, it was Lion's responsibility to bring it to the ruins. Okay. Sounds like a fairly stupid case to end things on, but okay. Oh, uh, ruin, there we go, west of the cemetery, that's where we're going. Footprints or uh, hoof prints. Two is the M4 wine that broke. Or I'm sure five is this where the priest was hiding. There is a string of pearls there. There's where they tied the priest up to get him drunk. Here's old Wooly. What remains of old Wooly? Alright, I'm gonna put considerable less time into consideration uh, than I did last time, or the times before. End in deep furrows. The animal was resisting. Uh -huh. What a waste. It's not too late, John. Lap it up like a fucking dog. Go ahead. Multiple bare footprints. I should examine them more closely. Subdue. Multiple bare footprints. I should examine them more closely. A handprint and footprints. Interesting. Oh, rosary. The priest said that he came here to stop the ritual. Did you really, Father? Hiding behind the bush. Gets discovered. The rope is soaked with wine. And Wooly. The goat was torn to pieces. Ugh. Savagery. It was as simple as that, huh? Okay. Oops. Drop the wine.
Lion. the order to take the priest out. This I don't know. We'll come back to that one. Um, the first one I don't know either. Let's see. The ox is the one who sprained your ankle. That's what this is supposed to be. Oh, which is exactly where I have it. So that's her spraining her ankle. Okay. The one who fell tied me up. The other in a lion mask. Oh, no, that was correct. The one who fell was the ox. Yes. Okay. So the only one I'm not sure about is the first one. She did say it was the bird's responsibility. Bird should know, have known better. So I'm guessing that's that. Let's see. So, we have three lusty women engaged in a ritual. They're drinking and dancing when suddenly they hear a noise from the bushes. Their ritual seems to be working. There's a man they can get drunk already. While two of them are busy with the priest, the third one leaves. She is the one who stole the goat and brought it to the ritual. The poor animal smells trouble and charges at the drunken woman with the amphora. Still, he couldn't break free and at the end was brutally torn apart and eaten alive. Well, they attracted the attention of men. The police, at least. Okay. Sorry, I didn't say hello to you, officer. I Can't forgot that you were there. The station, away from this... You can leave now. We've solved it. Get our money. Start clerk, another case old. I have great news. Our recent accomplishments have earned me a promotion. Our Sergeant yes. Stark. It has a nice ring to it, hasn't it? What about me? I mean, congratulations. Please accept my congratulations, Sergeant. Your part in solving those cases was invaluable. Come, come, Mr. Holmes. Your part was just as important. Not without my guidance, of course, but you did an excellent job. Anyway, I'll be moving back to the office space. My days at this blasted desk are almost over. I won't be scapegoated now. Good for you, I suppose. Uh, speaking of scapegoats, I've solved the last case on the board. The goat was stolen by the lady in the blackbird mask. As if that makes any difference, judging by the atrocity I witnessed at the crime scene. Yes, I heard about that one. The things women get up to these days. Ugh. Well, I'm glad to have been of service. Now I have other matters to attend to. Uh, Mr. Holmes, if I may be so bold as to make one last request. Okay. Do you remember that I told you that our chief inspector has been missing for a few months now? My current task is to establish his fate. I've tried to make sense of his last case, but it's a convoluted mess. I would really appreciate your help. Well, yeah, why don't you do it yourself, Sergeant? Fine. You have me intrigued. Thank you awfully, Mr. Holmes. 
Tell me everything you know. Well, I don't know much. Just that it's connected to a gang Shit's called a mouthful the there. Placido has been after their leader, the Hive Master, for years. But otherwise, I can't make head nor tail of it. Here, take the key to Placido's office. You might find some leads in there. Cool. So is it Chief Inspector Placido who has vanished? From what I've gathered, he was a good detective. Ain't that the truth? He was solving cases like shelling peas. Without him, things have gone downhill. He was a crotchety sort, always grumbling, fussing, taking his snuff by the handful, but I, for one, miss the old boy. Very well. I'll see what I can find out. One thing is certain. It's a dangerous business. Be careful, Mr. Holmes. Child's play. Looked his coat and hat. John. Steamer trunk safe. Maybe smoker, but left his cigarettes. Okay. It's a little odd. We've been through this before, and now you know well that I cannot allow it. Retirement is out of the question. So he faked his death so he could get the hell out of here. Um. Trying to read the name. Hive Master. Hive Master. Crime Lords just love catching monikers. Scandal in Old City of the Bootlickers League. The files are gone, that's odd. Dancing geese. I can almost picture you as an inspector, Sherlock. You'd lie on his sofa all day and still solve more cases than the rest of the police. <laughs> this must have been an award for long and faithful service. A box of snuff. Strong stuff. Snuff and cigarettes. That's a lot of tobacco. Hive gang police raid is the hive master dead for police inspector Luciano J. Placido the night of May 13th ended in gunshots, blazing fire, lost comrades, and the label of hero. Um, that's a lot of reading. Fuck that. Um, they're not. Case files are not there. Now that is odd, to say the least. Collection of local and nationwide newspaper articles all mention the Hive and Hive Master and are organized chronologically. Okay. A little Hive symbol there. I saw one of those before. Um, Beatrice Queen, City Hall Records, said Miners End 1877. Same year, same district as the gunfight. Lucy Redner near my nose all along. 
Let's take the ear, Sherry. It'll bring us luck. You'll see. Good Lord, you can't be serious. Okay. Nice. Always play it by ear, pal. I also saw that there was something to examine over here, though. Okay. Apparently, I only needed to find the one. Archives. <coughs> City Hall records. I have not been to City Hall yet. City Hall is there. Lost, sir. I'm looking for the Not archives. I'm right where I need to be. I'm Sherlock Holmes, by the way. Ursula Oni, the chief archivist. How can I help you exactly? I need to take a look at the history of Cordona and its islanders to retrieve some hopefully useful information. Your brother Mycroft told me that you were direct, and now that we've met, I can see that is true. <clears throat> Someone in our family has to balance the evasive nature of my brother. Well, may I use the city archives? You may, of course. But in return, perhaps dinner? That's a high price to pay for looking at your archives. <laughs> I was teasing you. Pay no attention to me. Me. Hey. Thomas Norton, Chief Archivist. No. Deputy Chief Archivist? Archive, there we go. Okay. Why is it on all of this? Oh, am I on? Have I pinned the wrong case? Yes. Alright. Miner's End. Hmm. Um. Beatrice, Queen, Citizens. Queen Beatrice, business entity registered in 1877, documents filed for closure in e January 1880, property registered in the name, okay, no, I don't see anything about 1877 though. I'll be right here. Yeah, if you say so. Um... Miners and Clay Street by Stevenson's Bridge to Silverton. Um, so about thereabouts here. It's a long way to go. Closest fast travel point, right up there.
Okay. Distillery is for sale, so clearing out on Hive Master's orders. Cornelius said he knows what he looks like, but he's full of it. On Hive Master's all. Typed messages, better oh. contact through proxies, type oh, messages. Did you catch that, Sherry? I didn't. Better listen more closely. Clearing out on Hive Master's all. Okay. Brother, witnesses don't survive. Type messages, contact through proxies. Not that, not that. We're seeing them. Uh, don't know what their boss looks like. Apparently, they've never seen the hive master in person. Okay. Means warehouse. Oh, come on. Coming for this you. is Hive territory. Shoot him, boys! <laughs> no more crime for you until next month. this take a rest my friend he's all your give him the pepper snuff oh. Oh. Snuff my oh. ass, John. no more the snuff's ready Oops, wrong button. I couldn't miss the party. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Get ready for some pain. Don't bother moving. Give him the pepper snuff. Shit. I couldn't miss the party. Oh, oh. Don't cry, you'll live. Take a rest, my friend. Damn it, come on. Time to knock this guy out. Snuff's ready. 
Can that be the end? No more crime for you. Give him the pepper snuff. Did I not kill anybody that time? All right, good for me. Key to the warehouse office. Okay. Definitely burning evidence. Someone's been burning papers, I see. But not all of them. Knitting. Hmm. Everything knits together. Burn the documents. Repair the goods. I will deal with the apiary. The shipment will be the last. If you are on the ship, you will be taken care of. If not, you are on your own HM. Can't spare any boys. Caltube is you wrapping up. Same as you. The boss has gone soft. Shutting down when we have the island in our pockets. Makes no sense to me. And what's with the letters? He never contacted us directly before. Don't I'd be a fool to cross him, but I sure as hell am not leaving. There's still easy pickings to be had here, hive or no hive. Okay. Chimia. Four, three, four. And one, three. Two. Um, four, three and one. Now I need. Except that's not going to do it. this where's that symbol um increment adds one to the reagents value oh okay all right that makes things a little bit easier then and i have three of those so i just need one. Oh wait one in line here um which i don't have so but now that i know that that adds one that changes things probably still going to use this do i have a three and a two no, i got a three and a one
Beeswax to Valen, 50 crates of yarn to Dublin, of honeycombs to Thalassa, or Thalassa. Okay. What do I do with this? Um, shipyard. Where, where are the docks? I wonder. We came in at Grand Saray, but I don't know if that's where they're supposed to be. Um, that's the Yacht Club. There has to be oh guns. What a convenient way to pull the wool over the eyes of the customs house. I will deal with the apiary. Okay. Well, it says we're supposed to talk to people. That's what this icon is. So, I guess they'll do that. How do I get out of here? the other door. What the fuck? Can I leave, please? What the hell? Kid, let me talk to you about something. May I ask you something? You look wet. Don't trust you. Okay. Let's try a little bit of shabby here. May I ask for your assistance? Oh, I know about that. Okay. Let me tell you. West of Wigan Street and Northern Miner's End. We also want me to stay away. Somewhere over here. Okay. Faster on point, I'll take that. It looks as though someone or something has escaped. A statue of a buckle cage inside a city full of criminals. Let's take a closer look, Sherry. For the ones who gave their lives in the silver mines, for the safety and prosperity of Miner's End, 1830. It used to contain a silver statue of a miner's canary. They were often used by miners to detect fire damp. No. 
they weren't. Canaries are actually used because as smaller creatures, they are more susceptible to um, succumbing to the toxins, toxic fumes, as might be found underground. So the canary, you know, when it dies, that's when everybody else in the mine, the actual human beings in the mine, know it's time to get the hell out. The lattice work was bent a long time ago. A gloomy picture, but quite poetic. A symbol of safety and prosperity has vanished from Miner's End, and now only the cage is left to remind the residents of their past glory. The canary was stolen a long time ago. There's no hope in finding it now, but perhaps someone might know at least something about it. We should ask the people around. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I would like to help a companion in misfortune, but I know nothing about... This. Are you able to help me? I will tell you what I know, my friend. So here there is as reminders and as rasmus of Gary Say that the flowers of good public houses, the seat of the local legend telly. It's near the alley in the northern part of Lestrade Road. Lestrade is a nod to the skeleton yard. Uh Investigator works with Sherlock Holmes. Or is exacerbated by Sherlock Holmes. Exasperated. God. Is this the apiary? Cool. Are you there, feller? Sir, I'm looking for a man who goes by the name of Hive Master. Um, the sulky, grouchy man in his 50s is clearly unhappy with my intrusion. He has some grated tobacco on his clothes and bee stings on his hand. Apparently he's been tending to the bees the apiary for a while now. He's hiding a missing ear and carrying Placido's revolver. The beekeeper is none other than Chief Inspector Placido, using the Hive Master's fearsome reputation to keep people away. Um... I mean, I did, did not actually read the documentation closely enough to tell if it mentioned that that was his ear or not. Um... Um, wow, okay, um, is it possible for me, no, I can't go back and read it now, now it's too late. I don't know enough about Placido to know if he's the kind of person who would keep a trophy like an ear like that. Uh, 
I think this guy... I don't think this guy is the Hive Master. I think the Hive Master is a woman. I think it might be Beatrice. Beatrice Queen. Which I think is a pseudonym, but I still think it might be a woman. All right, we know, okay, we know he's got the revolver, but that means he might have killed Placido and taken it. But he is a snuff taker, and so is Placido. He's also a smoker, but they didn't mention that. He's been tending bees for a while now, though. Placido was not tending bees for a while. And the documentation we found, the paperwork we found at the Queen Bee's office said that they'll take care of things at the apiary. Okay, I have no basis for this. I am going to choose that the beekeeper is Placido because that's the version of the story that I would prefer. It's way more interesting than this character being the hive master. It doesn't make more sense. It makes about as much sense. I don't really have any evidence for it. It's just the outcome that I would prefer. So I'm going to choose it. Uh, okay. Chief Inspector Placido. And what makes you think that? Why, your missing ear, amongst other things. You need a larger hat. I've been investigating your last case on behalf of Sergeant Stark. And now I think I understand what happened to the Hive Master. Humor me. Um. I don't think he lived a double life. Although. He didn't invent him. I don't think he is him. You killed him, didn't you? Huh. You're sharp, son. I give you that. But why? Everyone deserves a trial. Wasn't my choice. He and his thugs attacked me when I went to arrest them. It was a kill or be killed kind of situation. Turned out for the best, though. With his cronies dead, not a soul knows what the Hive Master looks like. His own gang, scared stiff of him. So you assumed his place to dismantle this criminal enterprise from within? Huh. Damn right I did. And after I'm done, I'm not planning to go back. I've had enough of this rotten nest of corruption. But it just won't leave me alone, will it? First, they dismiss my retirement requests, and now they send a sleuth after me. It's not like that. I tell you what it's like, son. This is not the first case you've worked on for Stark, huh? That Amateur promoted to a sergeant for his merits. I don't think so. You got me there, no, dude. Officer. But from what I can see, you are much brighter than the lot of them. So what's your stake in this? You some sort of consulting detective? Hmm. Yes. I suppose you could call me that. My name is Sherlock Holmes, at your service. Then do me a service, Mr. Holmes. Drop this case and don't tell anyone you saw me here. Let me enjoy my retirement in peace. I have your ear. I, um... I have your ear. What the hell? Give it to me now. All right, but let's make it a fair exchange, shall we? Um, I don't want either of these. I want a few beehives in return. I have space in my garden. Who knows? Perhaps someday I might try my hand at beekeeping too. <laughs> Deal. Now go. Why bees? I have to ask, why are you so fascinated with beekeeping? 
I just want a quiet life away from the hustle and bustle. Watching the little workers like I once watched the criminal world of Cordona. Yes, it suits me just fine. I'll consider your request, sir. Either way, I must talk to Sergeant Stark. Tell him I died a hero. Or a coward, I don't care. As long as they leave me alone. Really, Sherry? Beehives? How old are you? 130? Unbelievable. So I wonder if I inadvertently chose correctly, or if the quest passes regardless of your choice. It just changes the ending of the quest. Not sure. Not sure. Let's go back and talk to Stark the Clark and we can sew up this episode here, because I'm starting to uh, bore a bit. And, by the way, I am 100% going to lie for the um, Chief Inspector. 100%. He definitely is um, absolutely correct about Stark and the corruption and all of that. And I really don't give a shit if... Uh, Let's go with the classic Sherlock look here for this one. Sergeant Stark's uh, back at his desk. Across oh, right. from the Chief Inspector's office. I forgot. There's no more Stark and Clark. Any news, Mr. Holmes? Um. Yep. Chief Inspector Placido can be presumed dead. I was unable to find his body, but the evidence is unequivocal. He's gone. I suppose I expected as much, but still it doesn't make it any easier. Placido was a good man. You would have liked him if you'd met him. Yes, it's, uh, it's a pity. I'm sure I would. In any case, no matter how bad, the truth is better than uncertainty. Please, take this as a token of gratitude. You've done us all a great service. Thanks again for your help. Good luck, Mr. Holmes. Man deserves to be left alone. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, John. Okay. And that's that, huh? There's no more quests or anything here. All right. What am I gonna do to earn money now so I can buy the rest of my furniture back? All right, I'm going to quick hop over here and buy the some more furniture, and then next time we'll go back to Stonewood and see what memories we can unlock with what we've got. A contest for the guests of Cordona. I suppose treasure. That might earn me some money. Refresh your interior. My goods will brighten up your house. If you say so. Sturdy bad globe. Enjoy your purchase. Okay. Relentless busy work, honestly. Anything else up for sale? No. Not that I see that has yet to be discovered. Okay, so next time we're going to head back to Stonebrook and see if we've unlocked some more memories and um, progress with the main story. So, see you next time. Take care.